So this is your job. To do your job today, I have some tools that you can use. I'm just going to show you the tools, and when you start to work, you may use whatever tools up here you would like. We often okay. do open-ended problems with students, and open-ended problems have the opportunity to turn into math effective tasks when the problems are broad enough that all students have, are challenged by the problem. That it's not, I can sit on the carpet and explain the problem and somebody already knows the answer. Broad enough that all the kids are challenged, but they're open-ended enough that there's not one right answer. You need to find all the different dimensions with a certain perimeter, and that there's multiple approaches to solving the problem. Um, today in our problem, a kid could literally use tiles the entire time and count the perimeter, and they could solve the problem just as accurately as a child who generalized that as you increase the width, you decrease the length, and they found all the possibilities. They're not going to achieve um, their goal at the same rate, probably, using those two different styles of thinking, but they both have access to the task, given their previous knowledge and what they're operating with. I got this um, tile right here, and I did this, and I had to count how much right here, one, two, three, four, and then um, I put four on the top because this is the biggest one, and then I had to count right here, that would be two, two on the bottom, and then four right there on the right foot, and then I did four times two equals eight, and then the area I got was eight. Using these tools, um, like you can make a comparison of how um, a perimeter can be stored. You can um, look at the the area of one part and compare it to the perimeter, so you can find other pieces of area. So it's important that all the kids in the classroom can start the task and have a way to work through it at different at different levels of understanding. So the problem the students had to solve today was about taking um, given perimeters of 12, 16, and 18, and they had to find all the different areas and dimensions of those set perimeters. And I chose this problem because oftentimes students are asked to work with a given area and find perimeters. And the reverse thinking is more challenging, to be given a set perimeter and find all the different possibilities of area. Um, because it requires a different type of counting. And last week we had spent time using area and perimeter formulas, and this week I wanted, to, I wanted them to see how area and perimeter are, are kind of interdependent um, and start to generalize how they're related. I also chose this problem because there's more than one answer. And so kids weren't, I got it, I'm done, there was a continuous learning flow throughout the lesson, and nobody, um, nobody actually came up to me today and said, what do I do when I'm finished? Because the task was um, broad enough for all the kids to have access and also be challenged at the same time. Math Effective Tasks let the student think about mathematics. Math Effective Tasks should be challenging, but not frustrate the student. Math Effective Tasks have multiple entry points meeting the needs of all learners. My question to you is, what Lucy are the possible Lucy Rutecki's students trade? explore patterns of perimeter and area with an open-ended problem. In other words, it's an effective math task because students can access the mathematics at their level and they can use varied representations to show their thinking. Ultimately, this type of questioning will help students develop a deeper understanding of mathematical concepts and problem solving. Skills necessary for student success. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have you start to think about this question. And tomorrow in math, we're going to finish up this problem. Veronica. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.